from grade nines and welcome to another video where we're going to work through a past paper so it might be quite a long video but if you want to work with someone through a past paper them explaining it to you maybe just being remembered or sorry reminded about certain um, ways of calculating something or certain ways of doing things then this is a good video to watch all right so this is a paper from our school from 2021 so if you want to go with um, through it with me, um, that will be a good idea. All right, so section A, question one, i um, like to start off with the data handling question. So these are two grades and they were busy with a tug of war game and their weights were listed as the following. So for the grade eights, because they are, um, they are smaller, they've they've gotten one extra person to play with them and then the grade nines obviously had one less than the grade eight so as you can see yeah very important with your data handling that is always in ascending order meaning from smallest to biggest and as you can see here yeah, our data is already in order for us all right a says determine the range of the body mass of the grade eight team so the grade eight team over here the biggest minus the smallest so the range is always the biggest minus the smallest which gives you 13. okay you can write kilograms you don't have to um, because we are busy with stats okay determine the modal number for the body mass of the grade 9 team so the modal is the one that comes forth the most modal and most is the same so as we look through the grade 9 over here 42 45 51 53 53 53 so as you can see, there are three 53s. So the one that comes for the most is the 53 kilograms. Calculate the median body mass for both groups. Okay, so for grade eight, you can just count with your hand if you want to. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, which means that there will be one, if it's an uneven number, there will be one smack bam in the middle. So it's going to be one, two, three, four, five one two three four five so for grade eight the one in the middle is 41. for the grade nines because there's one less there is going to be two in the middle because it's going to be an even number so one two three four I'm just going to highlight those two one two three four i say so just always check that you've got the same amount on each side left so for grade nine it will be 51 plus the 53 divided by 2 please first press equal there 51 plus 53 equals divided by 2 which gives you 52 if you're not going to press equal your calculator is going to apply bod mass or bed mass which is going to first divide by 2 over there okay calculate the mean body mass of the grade 9 group rounded off to the nearest kilogram oh ma'am it's mean of you to ask me to add all of these numbers together and then to divide with how many there are the mean is the average okay but very important they're asking you from the grade nine group so i'm just going to go ahead and add it all on my calculator okay which gave you 502 please write your steps down here because if you perhaps um had a bit of thick fingers or whatever you pressed incorrectly you want to have your ca marks your continued assessment marks okay so the grade 19 um there's only 10 so we're going to divide with 10 which gives you 50.2 but they ask you to round off to the nearest kilogram so it will be 50 kilograms okay so please remember so if for instance um we say that you forgot or you you've miscalculated the total you can still get ca marks over here if you still divided by 10 okay and got the right answer from there onwards okay then they say the one grade nine class had a test on the very same same day um, where the marks were recorded as follows write up the five number summary of the marks um, achieved by this specific class so some of you only do the venn di um the um sorry not the venn diagram the box and whisker diagram um in grade 10 but we already start with that in grade 9 perhaps you want to just see what it looks like if you've not done this before don't stress then you can just move on to the next question okay but um the uh the the five number summary is always the minimum 
the maximum, the median. Okay, so let's just check. My data is in order. So it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. And then if you want to remember the formula that we use to find the median number, we say 14 plus 1 divided by 2 which gives you um, 7.5, so number 7 and number 8 will be the middle number, position number 7 and position number 8. Okay, so it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7 and 8. Just to make sure, I'm going to check that there's an um, equal number on each side, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay, um, that would be your median so remember if there's two in the middle how do i find 79 um i add the two and you divide by two so 78 plus 80 equals divided by two which gives you 79 okay so we've got the minimum which is 36 we've got the maximum which is 100 and we've got the median which is 79 the median can also be called quartile two. Okay, now to find quartile one and two, uh, sorry, quartile one and three, we'll have to find the low quartile and the upper quartile. So if there's two in the middle, then we're going to break them up to find the low and the upper part. So we're going to break it up into the upper part, the people who achieved better and the people who didn't study so hard. Okay, and we want to find the median now of the upper part. So if there's two in the middle, each go to a side because it's easily divided by two and each one goes to the upper part and one goes to the lower part. If there's one in the middle, then shame. I always say, oh shame, he's all alone, leave him there. Okay, so he doesn't form part of the lower or the upper quartile, he just stays excluded from your data. Okay, the only place where you will use him is for quartile two. Okay, so we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, which means we'll have one, two, three, 92 will be your upper quartile or your quartile three. And then we have one, two, three, and 69 over here will be your lower quartile or your quartile one. Okay, so let's write that down. Let's write it in terms of your quartiles is 69 and quartile. 3 is 92. That's not very hard, hey? Then it says use your five number summary to draw up a box and whisker diagram. Remember to label all your points. Okay, so with your box and whisker, we always have to have a number line. Okay, so this number line, as you can see, um, ranges between 30, perhaps, which is your lowest, and your highest, which is then 100. Okay, so I'm going to do just that. 30, 40... 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, 100. I always say you can't go 1, 2, skip a few, 99, 100. You have to keep it in order or um, um, and in ratio as you write it up. Okay, so you have to keep it in a pattern. We're adding 10 or adding 1 the whole time, depending on your um, the range of your, um, of your data. Okay, so now your minimum is where you're going to make a dotty which is over there, which is your 36. So I'm going to label it. Then as well as your maximum, which is 100 over here. Oops, sorry. Then your median, 79 over here. I'm someone going to call it quartile 2. Quartile 1 is 69. And quartile three is 92. Okay, and then you're going to form a little boxy around your three middle dots and two little whiskers over there. Okay, and then a stripey down there. Then the way that this one has been distributed, you always go, they didn't ask me this, but uh, just to um, explain to you again. So how is this box and whisker distributed? You go to the median over there, and then you say which side of the block is bigger, to the right or to the left. And if it's to the right, it will be positively skewed 
or you can say skewed to the right. If your boxy to the left is bigger, then you will say negatively skewed or skewed to the left. Um, and if it is an even distribution, you'll just say it's evenly distributed. Okay, that's your box and whisker. All done. Question two, the geometry, which you all love so much. And <laughs> it's really not that hard. Okay, in the diagram below, AB is parallel to CD. So very important when they give me those parallel lines, I must look out for the F, the U and the N. The corresponding, the co-interior or the alternate angles. Okay, they've told you that CF is equal to FE. So very important. I've got an isosceles triangle which represents angles opposite equal sides. So I know that that will also be 64. Okay, I always see it as an isosceles. I always tell the kids, it's like a child. Her name is isosceles and her legs are the same length and her feet are then hence the same size. Okay, so X is equal to 64. Then they say to you, F1, oh, sorry, I haven't read, uh, complete the statement and reason table below. Okay, so they say to you, um, C over there, X is equal to 64. Oh, sorry. And then the reason is angles opposite equal sides. I know some of you are taught to write isosceles triangle. We, however, teach them angles opposite equal sides. So F1 is equal to 180 minus 64 minus 64 because of interior angles of a triangle. Because we know that the interior angles of a triangle all add up to 180. Which means that F1 is equal to 180 minus 64 minus 64 which gives you 52 degrees. Okay, which means that F2 is also 52 degrees. Why? Because of vertically opposite angles. It's if you've got two straight lines and two angles across from each other, means that those two purple angles will be equal as well as the two red in, um, angles over there. Okay, so F2 is also equal to 52 degrees because of vertically opposite angles please don't write just opposite angles it's vertically opposite angles okay then a1 and f2 is equal to 180 can you see the bowl over there and they have given me that they are parallel so it's because of co-interior angles um, and we have to label which two sides are parallel to each other and they've even told me there a B is parallel to, or is it is para A B is parallel to C D. So if you can't oh there's C D over there. Okay. You cannot get this mark if you didn't tell me which ones are parallel. So just please don't forget that. And then A1 is equal to 180 minus that 52, which gives you 128 degrees. Easy seven marks. Okay, they're leading us into the questions. Okay, in the diagram below, AB is parallel to CD. So very, very important. I can almost see that the C is going to be equal to 37 because of alternate angles. That D over there is 123 because of vertically opposite angles. Um, we've got a Z over there. We've got co-interior over here. A and 123 will give you 180 because of co-interior angles. Um, B over here, we're going to look now how to get that. Oh, <laughs> one thing that I always say, oh, you guys, please remember your straight lines. Once we've got A, we can work out B with angles on a straight line. Okay, so before we start coloring too much over our picture, let's start writing. So A plus 123 is equal to 180 because of co-interior angles AB parallel to CD. 
please again you cannot have that with any of your fun okay you you, you must have sorry <laughs> your parallel lines whenever you use any of the three the f the u the n okay so a is going to be 180 minus 123 which gives you 57 okay and once you get a, an angle go and write it in so now we can say but a plus b plus sorry plus 37 is equal to 180 because of angles on a straight line thus b is equal to 180 minus 57 minus 37 which is 86 okay then c over here we said is equal to 37 because of alternate angles and again you have to say a b is parallel to c d and then number D, the last one over here, sorry, I'm going over a little bit, is 123 because of vertically opposite angles. Okay, so one mark over there, I would give you one, two, three, four, perhaps something like that, giving, getting all the angles, one, two, three, four, and then with all the reasons correct as well. Okay. Whenever you see a 90 degree triangle, think Pythagoras. Okay, you have to know your Pythagoras statements. Okay, consider the following sketch. Calculate X. And what I've taught my kids is remember your Pythagorean triplets. You get 3, 4, 5, 6, 8, 10. And there's quite a few extra after that. But I always say keep an eye out for your Pythagorean triplets. Okay, but... So if you know them, you could have immediately just said that X is 5 centimeters because of Pythagoras. Okay, if you can't see that yet very well, it's the two sides touching the 90 degrees squared, added together, gives you the longest side squared, the hypotenuse. What is the hypotenuse? The hypotenuse is the side of the angle opposite the 90 degrees so that will give you is equal to x squared and please people you can't use pythagoras by saying oh thank you dear pythagoras okay which will give you 9 4 squared is 16 and 25 is equal to x squared thus x is equal to plus minus 5 centimeters but because we're working with distance it will always just be 5 centimeters i don't know if you're um teacher has started exploiting that or not exploiting drilling that into you saying that you whenever you square root an answer you have to add a plus minus okay but we'll get to that later okay so this is five centimeters over there then and now again the two sides touching the 90 degrees squared added together will give you the hypotenuse squared okay so people please it's not always the two that you have added together squared it's the two sides touching the 90 degrees and i always say take out a highlighter highlight the two sides that are touching the 90 degrees okay so it's going to be y squared plus 5 squared gives you 17 squared again you have to have pythagoras and now you can throw it over y squared is equal to 17 squared minus 5 squared. So 17 squared minus 5 squared gives you, sorry, 17 squared minus 5 squared gives you y squared is equal to 264. Okay, now how do I get y alone, y squared alone, sorry, y is equal to plus minus 264 square rooted is 16.25 if you round it off i'm sure they would say round your answer off to the nearest two decimal place so it's 16.25 and because it's a distance maybe you don't have to do this yet but we'll always just use the positive and did they give units yes it's centimeters 
Okay. People, get to know Pythagoras. Okay. I say, in the following figure, AC and BE intersect at D. Over there, also AD. Uh, where is that? AD is equal to BD. So I'm just going to make a stripey, stripey like that. People, please, very important, you need to read your write-ups. You can't just start your sum. Read what has been given. Okay, especially with this, which is similarity and congruency. We need to read and we need to understand what's going on. And then they tell me that C is equal to E. So those things have all been given. Okay, so now they say, do you prove the triangle A, D, E? So I'm just going to highlight it a little bit. A, D, E is congruent. That means congruent. And how do we prove that something is congruent? There's a S in the SAS, in the SAA, right angle hypotenuse side, as well as angle side angle. Okay. Um, all right. So that that is congruent to this. Okay. So now I've got a side. Okay. That side and that side is equal. It's been given. I've got an angle over there that's equal. And the third angle, can you see that D1 is equal to D3 because of vertically opposite angles? And then we can work with side, angle, angle. Okay, side, angle, angle, which is that one over there. So we're going to start. Um, you're going to say AB, sorry, AD is equal to AD is equal to BD AD is equal to BD can you see your order there as well because it has been given angle E is equal to angle C because it is given and then D1 is equal to D3 because of vertically opposite angles you can use any of your Pytho Py uh, pythagoras your geometry reasons in um, similarity and congruency okay so then we're going to say thus triangle a d e keeping with your order over there is congruent to triangle b d c because of side angle angle and people that is the easiest four marks that you will ever get <laughs> okay then just a question upon this, hence prove that A1 is equal to B1, A1 is equal to B1, A1 is equal to B1. So can you see that they, they are equal because we've just proven that the, the two triangles are congruent. So you're just going to state A1 is equal to B1 because triangle ADE is congruent to triangle BDC. I've just proven it over there okay <laughs> um then similarity question let's see remember if you had to prove that something is similar you can either prove it with angle 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 or all sides in proportion but if you don't have all the sides you cannot use all sides in proportion okay so so most likely that you'll always use angle, angle, angle. Okay, so let's start. They told me that AB is equal to 8.5. AE over there is equal to 16. BC is equal to 25.5. And EC is equal to 30. All right, so prove the triangle ACE is similar to triangle BCD, giving reasons for your statements. Okay, so... Can you see very sneakily they've given me parallel lines there? So they didn't do it in the right up. Or they did in the drawing row A is parallel to BD. So they've given it. So think of the F always lying upside down, facing up. Can you see that E will be equal to D1? As well as if the F was lying facing down, that A1 is equal to B1. 
Okay, and the last one, if you can see here, ACE, it's that triangle that you have to prove similar to BCE. So can you see that they are sharing this angle C over there? It's a common angle. Okay, so we're going to start. A1 is equal to B1 because of corresponding angles. AE is parallel to BD. As well as E1 is equal to D1. Also because of corre... <laughs> Let me just try that again. Corresponding angles. AE parallel to BD. And lastly, angle C is equal to angle C because it's a common angle. Okay, so then we're going to say thus, triangle ACE is similar to triangle BCD because of angle, angle. Now with the next question, it says calculate the length of BD and CD. So now because we know that they are in proportion, because they are um, similar, we can, because they are similar, we can now take that they are also all sides in proportion. Okay, so remember the two ways of proving it is angle, 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 or all sides in proportion. But once we've proven that they are similar, we can take it that all sides are in proportion. Okay, so you're going to do your smiley write-up. I always call it the smiley write-up, which is going to look like this. Okay, very cutesy. Okay, and that's very important to use this order over here. So triangle ACE, so we proved the triangle ACE was similar to triangle BCD. Okay, so the order is very, very important. Okay, so now we're going to say, well, because they are similar, we know that all sides in proportion. So we're going to say triangle ACE is similar to triangle BCD. It was proven. Thus, what it means is that all sides are in proportion. So we're going to do our smiley write-up. Okay, so AC, the first and the law, the first and the second, is should be in ratio to BC, which will equal to CE over CD, which is equal to first and last, which is AE over BD. Now you've got your smiley right up. Now we just need to go transfer all our sides um, lengths onto this um, ratio scale over here. Okay, so AC, AC over there is 8.5 and 25.5. So AC, and I just want to do this very nicely, 8.5 plus 25.5, which gives you 34 centimeters. So AC is 34 over BC. BC over here is 25.5, which is equal to CE, CE, which is 30. over CD, which we are looking for, is equal to AE, which is 16, over BD again, what we are looking for. And now I always say calculate it with the butterfly method. So we need to use the fraction that is given to us complete. So 34 over 25.5 is equal to 30 over CD. Okay, so now we're going to use the butterfly method. We're going to multiply across like this. So those two multiplied with each other is equal to those two multiplied with each other. So let's write that up. 34 CD is equal to 30 times 25.5, which gives you 765. 
And to get CD alone, I'm going to divide with 34 on each side. Thus CD is 22,5 centimeters. But now we also need to get BD. So we're going to link it to the complete fraction that we've got. Sorry, this should actually stand over here, but I'm just writing on this side because I don't have enough space. Is equal to 16 over BD. Again, cross multiplication. So 34 BD is equal to 16 times 25.5 which gives you 408. Then I'm going to divide with 34 on each side to get BD alone. And then this is 12 centimeters. So a little bit harder. Sometimes the ratio parts are easy to see. Um, you know, it's like a half. And then so what would two be? The other one would be four then. Um, so, but this one, we need the butterfly method to get the other missing side. Then they say to you, prove the triangle ACE is in fact a right angled triangle. So ACE is in fact a right angled triangle. So I think the 90 degrees could be there. But because we've got ACE, We've got all the distances. Let's think, let's assume that that could be the 90 degrees. Then we need to know that if AE squared plus AC squared, so let me write this down, AE squared plus AC squared, if this is equal, we don't know yet, to 30 squared, then they will be a right angle triangle. Because the only time we're allowed to use a right angle triangle is when we have Pythagoras. So if we can use Pythagoras and apply it to this triangle over here, we can prove that it is 90 degrees. Okay, so let's put that to the test. Let's say AE squared plus AC squared is equal to... So I'm just going to do it over here. 8.5 plus 22, oh, sorry, 25.5 squared gives me 1156. Sorry, AE I did first. So I'm just going to say plus 1156. And what is 16 squared gives me 256. So that together gives me one four one two so then if i square root that it gives me um 16 squared plus let me just do that again Question C says, prove the triangle ACE is in fact a right angle triangle. So if we go back to the triangle over here, AC is 16, EC is 30, and AC, if I add them over there, it will give me 34 centimeters. And what do we know about a right angle triangle? A right angle triangle goes hand in hand with Pythagoras. So right angle, Pythagoras, please remember that. And if we had to use Pythagoras, oopsie, sorry, we will have to prove that that angle over there is 90 degrees because it is opposite, the, sorry, opposite to that is the hypotenuse, which is always the longest side. Okay, so the hypotenuse, the longest side, will always be across from the 90 degrees. Okay, let's quickly go C and if it works out. So I've got 16 squared plus, sorry, I just want to make sure, 30 squared. And that gives me, if you put it in your calculator, 16 squared plus 30 squared gives you 1156. And if you square root that answer, 
1156. It gives you, in fact, 34 centimeters. So thus, you can say AE squared plus, so I'm going to get the naming right, EC squared is equal to AC squared. And that is because of Pythagoras. Thus, triangle ACE, a right angled triangle. Okay. I hope that makes sense. <laughs> if you want to take a breather, shame we are almost, almost towards the end. Okay, in the following picture, the lines indicated or indicate the possible routes Jacob could take from the school to a sports practice. He can take the following routes, route A, F, E. So A, F, E. So here's the school and he is trying to get to the sports field. So he can either walk like that or he can walk A, B, D, E like that. Or he can go A, B, C, D, all the way like that. So it tells you, calculate the distance of the shortest route Jacob can walk to sports practice from the school gate A to field E. Okay, so route A, F, E. A, F, E is easy. 800 plus 400 is equal to 1,200 meters. Distance root A, B, D, E, A, B, D, E. Okay, again, yes, Pythagoras, 300, 400, and this one would be 500. And if you want to write there 500 because of Pythagoras, you could have said it here just for if the teacher didn't see that. Okay, how did I know that? You could have said B, D, sorry, B, C squared plus C, D squared will give you B, D squared. Pythagoras, but if you know your Pythagorean triplets, you know that it ranges in three, four, fives, so it can be the same as 30, 40, 50, or 300, 400, 500. Okay, and that root would be A, B, so that is 300, this is 400, so that part over here should in fact be 100, do you agree? Because together it must give you 400. So it will be 100 plus 500 plus over here, although it doesn't look like it, that one is 400, that, that one should also be 400. Okay, and that's why we always say in the beginning of the test, um, not no sketches are drawn to scale, just to cover our backs. <laughs> 900, so that's 1,000 meters. And then the other route, it will be A, C, which is 400, plus another 400. Let me just make sure. From there to there is 400, and from there to there, sorry, is 400 plus 800, which is also 1,200 meters. So the shortest route will be that one. And then it says convert the answer of the shortest route from question A to kilometers, so 1,000 meters is also one kilometer okay section b a little bit harder these are ib exams so we always have two sections section a which is quite straightforward and easy and then section b who's a little bit harder um, and more level three four type questions Okay, let's start. Question 8. Write down the area and the perimeter in terms of x in simplified form of the given figures below. Okay, so the area, we know if that one is 4x, then that one would be 4x, then that one would be 4x, then that one would be 4x. And we know the area is length times length or length squared, which gives you 4x times 4x which is 16x squared. Perimeter, 4x plus 4x plus 4x plus 4x, whoopsie, gives you 4, 8, <laughs> 12, 16x. <laughs> so, okay, so it just shows you nicely with the algebra multiplying. When you multiply and when you add, you add like terms. 
Okay, and when you multiply, you multiply the number and your exponent rules. Okay, the area over here, 5x times 3x gives you 15x squared. And the perimeter, if that one is 5x, then that one is 5x. So it's 10x plus 3x and 3x makes 6x, which gives you 16x. All right, then the area. The area for a circle is pi r squared, which gives you pi. The radius is 2x squared, which gives you pi 4x squared. The perimeter is 2 times pi times radius, which gives you 2 times pi times 2x. And then you can simplify those two. 4x times pi. Okay, so that is, this is what we mean in terms of x. You're not going to find the answer, but you're going to have x in your answer so that if you find a value for x, you can just sub it into your simplified um, expression and you can get your answer. Okay, just wanted to make sure everything is right there. All right, study the two figures below. Which of the two solids above has the greater volume? Show all your calculations. Okay, and I know you love these questions. <laughs> okay, so let's do the volume of the cylinder over here. The volume of a cylinder, if you can't remember, it's the area. Let me just do that again. Oopsie. Is the area of the, um, it's, uh, how do we say it? It's the area of the shape that doubles itself up. So in this, what is the area of the shape? What is the shape of the, what, what shape doubles itself up? Can you see it is definitely the circle? Okay, so for the volume, I'm gonna do it like, like this. For the volume of a 3D shape, it's the area of the shape that doubles itself up. So in this case, it's gonna be the circle. What is the area of the circle? pi r squared and then you times it with how much distance is between those two shapes which is four okay the radius over there if i'm not mistaken after i've started coloring so nicely <laughs> is one so pi times one squared times four which will give you 12,57 if I round off meters cubed. Okay, now the same with the triangle. It's the area of the shape that doubles itself up. Can you see the shape that doubles itself up is the triangle? And a triangle's area is base times height divided by 2. And then you times it with the distance that is between those two shapes, which is 2. So base times height, remember base and height is always the two sides touching the 90 degrees. There's your 90 degree area. So base times height is 3 times 4. You didn't have to calculate anything here. Divided by 2 and times by that distance over there. So 3 times 4 divided by 2 times 2 gives you 12 meters cubed. But let's look at the question. Which of these two solids above has the greater volume? Thus... The cylinder has the greater volume. Just always answer what is asked. Okay, which is this one over here. Okay, calculate the surface area and the volume of the following shape. The bottom of the shape must be included for the surface area and all measurements are in meters. Okay, so this is very nice. When you've got a highlighter or some other color, do these in bits and pieces, bits and bobs. Okay, so the surface area. Let's break it down. Okay, let's do the triangle there first. What is the area of the triangle? It's base times the height. So remember, there was my 90 degrees. So for the triangles, it's base times height divided by 2. But because there's one on the back there as well, 
I'm going to times it by 2. And then I've covered that back triangle over there. Okay, so times it by 2. So the two triangles is going to be 12 meter squared. Okay, I'm just going to erase that part just so that we are clear with all the shapes. Then I've got this square over here. So for the square is 4 times 4. And do you agree there's one at the front and one at the back? So I'm going to times it by 2. 4 times 4 is 16 times 2 gives you 32 meters squared. Okay, let's do the top rectangle, which is 8, eight times 4. And do you agree there's one at the bottom as well? So we're going to times it by 2. So 8 times 4 times 2 gives you 64 meters squared. Okay, so we've done, the only thing we haven't done, we've done the top and the bottom there. We've done this in the front and the back. We've done the front and the back. So the only one we haven't done, we've done the bottom there. We haven't done the bottom over here as well as the big rectangle here at the back. So let me just get another color. Okay, as well as this rectangle over here. So let's do this rectangle. We know that this is, if this is 3 and that is 4, that is 5. So 5 times 8, because there's an 8, there's an 8, there's an 8. So the purple one is 5 times 8. And maybe you just have to say because of Pythagoras that is 5. And I'm not going to times it by 2 because it's a different shape on this side as it is on this side over here okay so five times eight is 40. okay so we're getting there slowly but surely so now we just need to do the bottom over here so sorry we did the top and the bottom here we didn't do the bottom on this side so we know that this is three and the length over here is eight so I'm just going to do the red sort of rectangle over there is 3 times 8. And 3 times 8 is 24. And then as well as this side over here, 8, oopsie, sorry, 8 times 4 will give you this back side. Can you see? So if it had to look something like that, I'm trying to draw it incorrectly, that side over there will be 8 times 4 and 8 times 4 is equal to 32 so now to get the total we're going to add them all up together so 12 plus 32 plus 64 plus 40 plus 24 plus 32 gives you a total of 204 meters squared. Just want to make double sure. Okay, yes, that's correct. Okay, then the volume. Can you see it's two um, prisms attached to each other? So it's the square based prism. So four times four. So for the, it's going to be four times four times. So length times breadth and times what it pops out with is. 8 which gives you 128 meters cubed remember your units correctly and then for the triangular prism it's base times height so it's going to be 4 times 3 divided by 2 so it's the area of the triangle times what it pops out with 4 times 3 divided by 2 times by 8 gives you 48 meters cubed. The volume is always easier. <laughs> Plus 128. So it's a total of, if you add those two together, 176 meters cubed. Okay, on to the next question. So they're looking, okay, let's quickly have a look. So 
Whenever you see a circle, think of radii because in this circle, OA will be equal to OB. So just remember that whenever a circle is given, it's not just that we want to make it look pretty. There's something with the radius. Okay, so in the figure below, radius OA is 17 and OC is 8. As they also tell you that OC is perpendicular to A, um, sorry, OC is perpendicular to AB and OC is 8. Also, AC is equal to CB. So those two have also, just don't want to draw too much on my picture. Then they say to determine the length of AB over there. AB. All right. So can you see with Pythagoras, we can work in this triangle because we've got a 90 degree triangle. So we can work out step one, AC's distance. But because they want AB, we can just say AC times two because it was given and we can get that AB then over there. Okay, so let's start. Okay, so AC squared plus OC squared is equal to AO squared. And that is because of Pythagoras. Whenever you use Pythagoras, please write Pythagoras. So AC squared plus 8 squared is equal to 17 squared. Thus AC is equal to 17 squared minus 8 squared which gives you 225 and then I'm going to square root on both sides thus AC is equal to the square root of 225 which is equal to 15 and they've just given me units okay I know it's a plus minus but we are only using the positive because it's a positive distance okay so then, but AC plus CB is equal to AB and AC is equal to CB. That was given. Thus, AB is equal to 30 units. Okay. Wasn't that bad? Question 11. In the sketch below, line A, B is parallel to line C, D. Very important. Why did they give that? So that we can use our fun. Okay. Determine the values of A and Y, giving reasons for your statements. Okay. So can you see alternate angles over there? Choo, 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 choo. So these ones are equal to each other. We also have an F lying upside down here with those two being parallel. Okay, so can you see that this angle over here is equal to that angle over there? And by doing that, we are creating an equation with one variable x, which means that we can solve that x. Okay, so that is because of corresponding angles. AB is parallel to CD, thus 2x is equal to 50 minus 10, which is 40. So x is equal to 20. Okay, and then again with our with our alternate angles over here, we can say that they are equal. Y plus 40 is going to be equal to 3y minus 20. Not because of corresponding, <laughs> sorry, because of alternate angles. A, B parallel to C, D. Thus, I'm going to bring it this way, 60 is equal to 3y minus y, this is 2y, thus y is equal to 30 degrees. Okay, not so bad, I hope. Maybe because I did it easily, you could have seen it, but you know, just take note of your, whenever parallel lines are given, when they tell me something's parallel, when they show me something is parallel, remember your fun. Okay. Question 12, last, second last question. Okay, and these are our harder type questions. So some of the students, we always say the ones who deserve the 80 to 100% is these are the questions for them. They must be able to get it right and they should earn that A plus symbol on their report. Okay, 
the volume of a cylinder. So now the volume of a cylinder. So let's think quickly. What is the volume of a cylinder? It's the area of a circle times the height. They tell me that it's 108 pi x to the power of 3. Determine the height of the cylinder in terms of x if the diameter of the base is 6x units. So the diameter is 6x units, which will mean that the radius is 6x divided by 2, which gives you 3x. Okay, so now I can go and replace my r with 3x. Okay, and they ask you to determine the height of the cylinder. So they want the height in terms of x, if the diameter. So they basically want the h alone. So then we're going to say that we are going to divide with whatever's in front. away with both sides mm, 3x sorry I've made a mistake there as well as there okay so we're going to divide with whatever's in front of the h away and once we do that we do it on the other side and then this is what I'm going to write here again pi 3 squared is 9x squared. So let me just reshuffle them so that they are all in order. 108 pi x to the power 3. So remember, you can do that because uh, they're all timesing with each other. So let me put the number in front, then the pi, then the x squared. So what is 108 divided by 9 gives you 12. So h is equal to 12, the pi and the pi cancels out, and x to the power 3 divided by x to the power 2 gives you x, and voila. Okay, so please remember what they give you, write it up. Say it's equal to that. Whatever they give you more, write it down. Say, but I don't have the, di the diameter going here, so let me do the radius. Go and replace it into R's value over there. And then you can work out the rest with algebra. Okay, a little bit of a harder question. <laughs> and then question 13, the last one. Determine the length of the rectangle in terms of x if the area is 5x to the power 3 minus 20x squared. And the breadth is 5x squared. Okay, so basically they are asking for the length over here. Of the rectangle in terms of x so again we're not going to find a definite answer we're going to have x in our answer if the area is 5x to the power 3 minus 20x squared so it's basically 5x squared times what will give you 5x to the power 3 minus 20x squared okay so now to find that what to find that what let's Sorry, call this one the length, like that. To find the L, we're going to divide here with 5x squared, and we're going to divide here with 5x squared. So the L, now that we've got it alone, is equal to, and yeah, you can split these them, you can find a highest common factor. Let's take out 5x squared at the top. What is left then? x minus. 20 divided by 5 is 4 over 5x squared. So that will cancel out and my length will be x minus 4. Okay, and the way you can just quickly test your answer, 5x squared times by x minus 4. Let's times those two together to see whether we get that in the middle yes we do and happiness we got all five marks there 
Okay, so these last two questions are a little bit harder. Remember, these are IB standard set uh, exams. So they might be a little bit challenging, especially the section B part. But well done for working it through with me. And I hope you understand a little bit better now. Okay, lots of love and have a great day further. Bye.